Hey friends, today we're going to go over fixing a common issue that a lot of people have when they record acoustic drums. Sometimes you don't have enough channels to capture all the mics that you'd want to have. For example, a beater mic for your kick drum and an under snare mic for your snare drum. Sometimes it's hard to get these drums to sit in the mix right if you didn't record these channels. And there's a way to fix it. Alright, let's check it out. So this is a tune called Shiitake, recorded by my band Papadocio. At the time of the recording, we didn't have enough channels in the interface we were using in this specific session to record all the channels that we wanted. We wanted a beater mic for the kick drum and an under the snare mic for the snare. But as you can see, we only have one kick channel and one snare channel. So let's take a listen to the problem first. Okay, so so far so good, I can hear everything. So once we got into that part, you can start to hear that the drums are getting buried, especially the kick drum, okay? So maybe your first assumption is that, okay, well, why don't you just sidechain the bass? Because it's obvious that the bass instrument is covering up the kick drum. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. On the bass channel, I have a sidechain fed from my kick channel, okay? So I'll go ahead and loop this section right here, and let's listen to, to the difference that this sidechain compressor makes. I'd say it makes a little difference. It definitely brings the kick forward in the mix a little bit and doesn't make it compete with the bass, but that still doesn't solve our problem. So maybe your next thought is, okay, we'll just boost, you know, the, the beater part of the kick drum, boost that. Well, I've already boosted it by almost 9 dB, okay? So I'm not getting enough. Basically is what I'm saying is I'm not getting enough. And if I boosted this anymore, we'd start to hear the other drums in the, in the kick mic room. Even though we had a blanket over the kick drum, this isn't gonna work, okay? And so the way to solve this issue, a very common studio technique, is to use what's called drum replacement software, okay? A lot of people will end up buying a plugin, and they will use that plugin to replace their drums. Now, Ableton Live can actually do this just right in the software, all right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So what the first step to doing this is, is you right-click, and you go to Convert Drums to New MIDI Track, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to spit out this hilarious... 606 collection of samples, okay? And it's going to try to determine a kick drum, a snare drum, and a hi-hat out of any sample you send it. All right, so let's let's see what happens. Okay, so we've spit out this file right here, and we can see... <laughs> let's take a listen to it. We can see that it's following the kick pattern, right? So the kick pattern is definitely followed, but it thought that every single one of these hits were hi-hats, snares, and kicks. So the next step every time you do this is to delete what you don't need. So in this case, I'll just select the hats and the snares, and now they're gone. Now check this out. You can see that my drummer did a pretty decent job of staying exactly on the grid, but he's a human being, so he's going to be on and off, and there's some swing to this song. So... This is a lot easier than trying to sequence. Even though we played to Ableton's clock, this would be so hard to sequence and get this exactly right. Instead, we just use the material here and spit out this MIDI file. Now, if we look at the actual instrument sitting in here, we <laughs> have this drum rack that has this dumb sample in it, right? That's not going to work. Let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like with everything else. So, without it, it sounds like this. And then with it, it sounds like this. Now that definitely brings the kick forward in the mix and now it's very, very thick, right? <laughs> and we have a little click at the beginning. But I want to enhance the acoustic sound of this. I'm looking for more of a meaty sound, like the sound of a beater hitting a drum head, right? So one thing I could do is I could just simply grab a sample that sounds like a meaty beater hitting an actual kick drum head, right? I could find one that sounds pretty good, right? So let's let's take a listen to some of these. Oh yeah, there we go. 
So I could just take the sample and I could drag it into this kick slot, right? And there it is. The trouble with this technique though is that I have all these extra samples in here and all this extra processing. There's just no reason to do that. So instead, I'll hover my mouse right here and you see how it says C1? All I gotta do is grab myself a drum rack, replace this entire device with it, right? I'll go back to my samples and I'm just gonna drag this sample into here. Now I got a fresh start. Everything's fresh. Super simple, all right? So now let's play these together. Oh yeah, it's so much better. So here's without it. Now we got, we got kick drums for days. The trouble though is, is that, let's just listen to the drums. This kick and this kick are competing for low end. And there's just some extra garbage in there that I don't need, okay? So the next move, the simplest way to do this would be to just turn on the filter, okay? And I'm gonna turn it on high pass mode, okay? This is the simpler sitting inside of this drum rack. So at this moment, it's not gonna make any sound, right? That's because the when you switch it from the low pass to the high pass, the cutoff frequency is all the way up. So it's totally high passed. So I need to bring this down until it sounds just like the beater, all right? Boom. Beautiful. Also, I should say, now that I've done this move, I should give it probably a little bit more volume because I've taken out a lot of the, the signal. Okay, so let's just say negative six. Let's try to see what this sounds like. I'll A, B it. So you can see if it's on or off with this little switch here. Cool. So sounding good thus far. But the problem is, is that I've got the meaty sound, but now I hear this extra air at the end. Listen to the sample by itself. It's just extra air. It sounds like crap. And that's from the reverb in the room from this sample. So the next thing I need to do is switch to classic mode and use the ADSR envelope so that I can get this to sound just right. So I'll turn the sustain stage all the way down, right? And now we have just that beater click. That's all we need, okay? That's all we need to make this better, all right? So without it, with it. <laughs> now, it's a bit louder than I normally would have it, but I wanna make sure that you can hear the difference, okay? So real quick, if you're enjoying my channel and you wanna support me, it's just as easy as following me on Spotify or SoundCloud, either my band or me, and you can find the links down in the description and comments. I also have been making Ableton Live courses. And I have one on mixing and mastering with Ableton and another on songwriting and composition with Ableton. And I'm almost finished with the sound design and synthesis course. So if you're interested about any of that, all those links are down in the description and comments. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Let's get back to it. So what I want to show you now is that this is clip specific, okay? So if I wanted to do that here, I'd have to right click on this clip and go to convert drums to new MIDI track. It's all based on clips. So if you have multiple clips like I do, because you take multiple takes, that's what you're gonna end up with. Now, let's move over to a more complicated section. So here's, <laughs> here's this crazy section here of this song. And here we can even hear more so that the kick drum is coming in and out of the mix, right? So what I'll do is I'll click on this entire clip, and remember, it's gonna do this entire clip, so right click, convert drums to MIDI. Now you'll see something has occurred. It's made a new track, right? So this is the track that we did all the work in, right? So all you gotta do is to take this track and slide it down. Now, the other cool thing about this is that there isn't any reason to delete the other MIDI because there's no drums living in that drum rack. This is why I did a new drum rack, right? There's no reason to delete this MIDI. It's not gonna fire anything. See, watch, while I play this. See, there's no samples there. So, you'll notice sometimes, I wanna show you something really important. Sometimes the first sample won't get in this clip. So sometimes you gotta go in here and just double click once for the first kick drum hit, right? So. Again, without this, it sounds like this. 
There's some meat in there, but with this, now we get... That's <laughs> so much better. And yes, again, it is very loud. I would back it off more, but I just want to make sure you hear it. Okay. So with that said, let's take a look at another example. Now, the snare drum in this part, Mike is playing a bunch, Mike the drummer is playing a bunch of ghost notes, meaning that he's hitting the snare drum hard and then he's doing little rides on the snare drum, uh, little quieter notes to kind of give it some more style. Take a listen. So let's look at what we would need to do in order to replace this drum, okay? So I'm gonna right click on here, convert drums to new MIDI track. Okay, so in this case, it's funny. You can actually see it didn't think there was a kick drum in there. It actually got it right for once. <laughs> and we can also see that, I wanna show you something else. We can also see there's a lot of velocity information here, okay? Now, these different velocities can lend themselves to the samples, meaning that the samples will get louder and quieter depending upon what the velocity is, if we set up simpler that way. Now, I'm gonna pull this back down. And so what I wanna do is let's take a listen to this MIDI that it made, all right? Now, this is cool, actually. This actually really helps us. We have a situation where the actual snare drum, like the, the actual hits, not the ghost notes, is one sample, and the ghost notes are these hi-hats. So my move here would be, okay, I'm gonna go in here and let's just go ahead and see what the samples are. So it appears that D1 is the, is the big snare and the hi-hat is on F sharp one, okay? You can see that down in the corner, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete this, bust out a drum rack, and now I know that I need to fill up F sharp one for the ghost notes and D1 for the actual snare, okay? So it's just as simple as going to samples, now you might think, okay, look for the, the bottom part of a snare drum, the actual acoustic snare drum. I could do that. But in this case, I just need something brighter. And this is where you can have some fun. You're doing some layering, right? You're layering sounds. You're layering um, electronic samples over top of an acoustic kit. So we could try all different kinds of stuff. You know, maybe one thing is we'll try an old school C78 snare drum and I'll put that on D1. Now, I know that the ghost notes, though, have to be very, very quick and concise, right? They have to be very snappy, right? So let's find a more snappy sample. <laughs> so this funky MPC file sounds like I could make it real snappy. So I'm dropping it in here, and I'm going to switch simpler to classic mode, pull the sustain down yet again, and try to get more of a snappy. Maybe just a little bit less decay. Nice. And then my, my main sample will be this. This is lasting too long as well. I just need a little bit more brightness. Okay, <laughs> let's see what this does. <laughs> so as you can hear, that's pretty cool, right? It works, but it's very loud and we have to do a little bit of mixing. So first of all, let's turn this down and see what happens. So negative six. Okay, cool. And you remember what I was saying before, another thing we can do is go into the controls, okay? We can say, all right, velocity to volume. If I crank this up a little bit, now the velocity information inside of this clip will be applied to this sound. And something else I should do is probably high pass this a bit. Okay, cool. This will help this snare cut through. Let's take a listen to this one. At this point, I think this is actually okay. Let's take a listen to what we've done now. Now I'm gonna turn it off. Turn it back up. <laughs> cool, so the final thing I would say in this case is I need to EQ this because you can hear there's a lot of brightness in this, a lot of air in this that just doesn't work with the kit. So maybe the final thing I would do is go to the top and I'll reach for an EQ8, I'll drag it in here and I'll take some of that just ridiculously high stuff out of there and we should get a usable signal.
And yeah, again, it's louder than I normally would do it, okay? This is just a small enhancement that can just totally be an incredible sea change in your entire drum bus if you just use samples to enhance the kit that's already there. See, at the end of the day, the samples that you're using, the original recording of the drums, that should be the dominant thing, okay? This is just a little enhancement. Cool, so if you dig this kind of thing, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.